Hey, you YouTubers. Good to have you back again. Welcome to Speaker's Corner. Wet as usual. I want to talk about Muhammad again, but this time I want to talk specifically about the Muhammad cartoons. Why in the world are so many Muslims upset with those cartoons? I've looked at them. I'm not sure if you had. Uh, you can look at the URL at the bottom of the screen to find out those the first uh, 12 cartoons. But more than that, I want to find out what is it that got the anger around the world. Why these riots? Why all these demonstrations? Here in London, we had a huge demonstration there at Trafalgar Square. And certainly, I went down there and there's an awful lot of people who are getting up and really referring to them and also getting upset by them. I want to find out what is it that's caught bothered you about those cartoons. And to do that, I think we need to look back and look at the history behind them. Because there's more that, than meets the eye. First of all, I do know that Muhammad is important to the Muslims. I do know that Muhammad is somebody that is integral to their faith, and I know he's foundational to what they believe. There's no reason, though, for to have this kind of reaction over just 12 incidental cartoons, which are basically caricatures of something that we have on, uh, that we put up on our news, in our newspapers all the time, concerning Jesus Christ and even God. There's a little bit of a history that needs to go on. In Denmark, when these came out uh, in 2005, in the summer of 2005, there was not much reaction. Even the next month, in October 2005, three or four of these cartoons were sent and were reprinted in Al Fajr newspaper there in Cairo, in Egypt, and there was no reaction there in Egypt. So certainly it wasn't the Muslims who were reacting uh, to these cartoons initially. Back in Denmark, there was a man named Laban, Sheikh Laban, and you'll see his picture right up here. Sheikh Laban lives in Copenhagen, and he was angered that there was no reaction to these cartoons. And so he decided to take it upon himself to take these 12 cartoons and to go to Egypt, to Al-Azhar University there in Egypt, to go to Saudi Arabia, and to go to Qatar to Yusuf Qaradawi. Sheikh Yusuf Qaradawi, he was on Al Jazeera television every night, and uh, you'll see him on Al Jazeera television every night, basically expounding on the Quran and on Islam. But when he went to show these 12 cartoons, he also took three other cartoons, which I'm not going to show you. They are despicable. But you can see them in the URL here at the bottom of the picture. Go up and look at those three cartoons. They are awful. These three cartoons depict Muhammad in a terrible way. You can tell that they are amateurish. One of them has a picture of Muhammad with a pig's, supposedly with a pig's head on, speaking into a microphone, mimicking Muhammad as a pig. The other two I'm not even going to describe because they're hopeless, they're awful. But what was interesting is that the anger that came out of the cartoons were really based on those three cartoons. Now, I'm sure most of the YouTubers have never seen those three cartoons. Time Magazine did a wanted to find out where these three cartoons came from. They were not printed anywhere in Denmark. They were not in any newspaper in Denmark that Time Magazine could find. They finally traced down the pig's head to a French village in the central part of France where every year, three on base it's called, where every year the pig farmers would have a competition to see who could squeal like the pig the best. And this was a picture of one of those pig squealers in that competition, you can see the microphone where he's squealing. He, not, he didn't t take first place. I think he took third place in that competition. But nothing in that, that uh, annual event refers to Islam or Muhammad. It had nothing to do with Muhammad. So therefore, who put that cartoon together? We now know where that cartoon comes from. It does not come from any press there in Copenhagen. It looks like it was put together by Sheikh Laban himself. We don't know. There's no way because he refuses to say where he got those three cartoons. Yet look at the damage that these cartoons or the controversy surrounding these cartoons have done. Look at the damage to the economy of Denmark. Look at the damage the 17 people who have lost their lives over those cartoons. And then you need to ask yourself, especially you Muslims, you need to ask yourself, if this man, Laban, if he is the one that is perpetrating this lie, and it is a lie, then why is it you're blaming the West? And why are you blaming Denmark? And why are you blaming, certainly, these 12 cartoons when the much greater problem the much greater lie is being perpetrated by someone from your own ranks a co-religionist and you need to start being self-critical and you need to start holding this man accountable and not the west nor the danish press and certainly not those other 12 cartoons on top of that there's a whole nother reference and that is what is should we allow when it comes to political satire when it comes to religious satire is this perfectly legitimate? Absolutely, it has to be. The speaker's corner right behind me would not exist if we did not have religious satire. If we did not allow to have public debate, if we could not allow this, then why, how is it we can have freedom of speech like you see here at Speaker's Corner? 
please be careful Muslims when you get angry when you get angry look at the facts more than that understand that your anger is not at all conducive to a debate on these issues and beware that the more angry you get the more that you're going to perpetrate this view of violence that you're trying to sublimate but anyhow it's good that we have the facts out in front let's deal with it let's debate it let's get back and forth on it and let's come to some conclusions this is Jaden over now